time. And uh, the pilot said he had to, uh, he had a, a guy that he checked on once in a while that was in the, let's see, Hoosliga area? Yeah, on the Koyaka? Hoosliga over here. Yeah, somewhere in there, Vincent. Here's Hoosliga. Hoosliga. Somewhere in there, he had somebody he wanted to check on, a gold miner. And he said, last time he flew by, there didn't seem to be much activity there, and he was kind of concerned. He said, I'll take you to Ruby, but would you go with me and we'll go by there? So he said, sure. So they flew over the, the guy's cabin in the winter, and by his mine, which is a little ways away, and things didn't look right, and he looked at the place closer, and all the dogs were dead in the dog yard mm. at, at their chain. And, uh, you know, oh boy, something's not right here, you know. That's pretty ominous. Yeah. So he landed on the river, which was a little ways away, and they made their way to the cabin. And when they got there, this elderly man had had an accident. At his mind, he was one of those shafts where you go down, mm -hmm. you tunnel each way and you thaw the ground, and he was doing that by himself. And in the winter, he'd bring dirt up and wash it later, you know. So he was going down his ladder. The ladder gave mm -hmm. way, and he went right to the bottom and had a compound fracture in both legs. Well, he was sometime getting himself back up out of that mine with the ladder broken and whatnot. He crawled to his cabin. Uh, this was a week or more before they arrived and got to him and uh, looked his situation over and went out and shot all his dogs. He knew he wasn't going to be able to take care of them. Thought that was the right thing to do. He drug as much firewood as he could to the porch and then got inside and started taking care of himself as best he could. When they got there and got up to his cabin, he had just completed uh, um, taking off both legs. What do you call it? Amputated. Amputated both legs. Wow. Himself. Wow. He had gotten gangrene and whatnot. And they bundled him up and took him to the plane and flew right back to Fairbanks with him. And the guy didn't live. He, he died a few days later. But they said it was just an awful story. What a horrible story. Oh, that's one of the this, sad stories of the old time. This classical. guy tells another story that's not so bad. Uh -huh. He tells about, <laughs> as a young man, he was uh, hunting for a hunting for a mining camp up at circle uh, and in the winter and he uh, was out trying to get meat and he came onto a group of caribou that were bedded down and he said there was about maybe 20 of them and he got himself situated he was going to try and get them all and he he, <laughs> he laid his ammunition out and he decided if he could shoot the one at the far side, maybe they'd come towards him and this and that. He had it all figured out. He squeezed off the first shot, and the whole herd got up and all their horns fell off. Oh. And he said, he said he was dumbfounded, and they scattered, and he never, he didn't get a one, and he, and he didn't fire another oh, shot. Oh no! He said he had a whole bunch of horns. That's all he did. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that startle you? Yeah. He said, oh, they, were, they were just all laying there so yeah. pretty, you know. <laughs> just the right time. <laughs> oh, geez. He swore it was true. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a good good way to justify yeah. not getting that was care of it. Steve, he used to go to our <laughs> community council meetings, and there'd be a whole bunch of young folks here that would say it or local residents that were saying they wish it was like it. It would stay the same. It would just be like it. We don't want any change. Uh 
Uh -huh. uh, and and he he listened to all that. Seldom had very much to say, but when he spoke, everybody listened and so on. He said, "If I think if these people wanted to be like it used to be, they ought to all leave." <laughs> <laughs> he had been here for the longest time. You know. How, now, when did he die? Oh gosh, it's been. I don't know him, Myron Stevens. I don't know that yeah, name. Yeah, it's probably been eight, ten years. Yeah. So, is there? Does he have any relatives still here in town? His wife still lives in a nursing home in Anchorage.